Hello, everybody. This is another edition of Daniel Fritz Mathematics, the professor. And today we're going to be talking about systems of equations. Just want to give a shout out to everybody out there all over the world, Germany, France, Japan, uh, Korea, all the uh, countries in Europe, and also as well as the United States, uh, giving you some mathematics to help you and the students all over the world, um, and those who are in distance learning as well. Uh, today, we want to basically talk about applications of systems of equations. And we have a particular problem right now that I want us all to do and try to look at. Okay, so this, this problem is dealing with student loans. And here, Enon's student loans total $9,600. I'm sure we all know about student loans. We're in college and stuff and have to pay them back eventually when we graduate. And part was a Perkins loan made at 5% interest, and the rest was a federal education loan made at 8% interest. After one year, Eon's loans accumulated at $633 in interest, right? So what was the amount of each loan? Now, let's just talk about some specifics here. Word problems for everybody can be very cumbersome and a very, very challenging thing. So however, I'm going to tell you what you can do to solve word problems that will help you. But this is to give you some ideas how word problems are solved in sequence. When solving word problems, one should read and understand the problem and be familiar with what is asked and also what is given. Now, you also want to what? Translate. Solve, check, and then state, which basically we want to do for this problem right here. Now, we basically read the problem and, and tried to understand what was going on. Well, here I built a chart, and the chart will kind of specify some things here. Now, let's just say when we familiarize, we want to let X equal the amount of dollars in the Perkins loan. Also, we want to let, let y, let y equal the amount of the dollars in the federal education loans. Now let's go back here to the chart. We have the Perkins loan, federal loans, right here, the principal, right? Basically, we don't know what x and y is, but x and y is dealing with those amounts in dollars, right? So. And then we have the interest rate, which is at 5%, right, and 8%. And then we have the time. The time is one year. And also the interest, which is actually 5%, it's always 5 over 100, or the number over 100. That's what percent is. And here, 0 0.05, which is going to be for X, and 0 0.08 for Y also, which is going to give you a grand total of $633 at some point. Now here up here with X and Y with the Perkins loan uh, in dollars and with the federal loans in dollars will give you $9,600. Now, let's go to step two and try to translate this thing. The total of the amount in the loans is shown, giving us the first equation that's so important, setting these equations up from the actual word problem. X and Y, right, X plus Y, which is equal to $9,600. Now remember, we're going to end up having what? Two equations and what? Two unknowns. Because here's the next equation. The second equation is the total amount in interest shown, you see. Giving us the second equation of what? 0 0.05x plus 0.08y, which is equal to 633. Now, that again, remember, that's in percents, right? However, Let's go ahead and multiply each side of the equation by 100 so it can be easier to work with the numbers, right? It doesn't necessarily change the validity of the problem, but it's basically we want to multiply 100 to get rid of the decimal so it can be easier to work with. So we look at 5x plus 8y is equal to 63,300. These are values basically because we what? We got rid of the decimals. Now, the third step here, we want to what? Solve 
using one of the infamous uh, methods, which is the elimination method. So now we have our equation, x plus y is equal to 9,600, and then we have 5x plus 8y is equal to 63,300. You see this, right? So this is very, very important that to understand how to set up the equation, then you can use one of the systems or one of the techniques or one of the methods to get x and y. Follow me a second. We're going to go over here and actually do, we're going to do step three. We're going to solve this thing, and I'm going to show you in detail, which is very important. Now, we've seen that x plus y is equal to 9,600. And in equation two, that was equation one, and this is equation two being 5x plus 8y equals what? 63,300. What I want to do in using the elimination technique, I want to multiply negative 5 to the top equation. Now remember I said in class, if you want to eliminate one of the variables, you want to always take the same value but it's opposite. And you take a number that's actually the same um, number, like for example 5, in this case, and 5. But one of them has to be opposite of each other so they'll cancel out. That's exactly what I'm saying. So they'll zero out to uh, 5x, negative 5x plus 5x. So in this particular situation, I want to take negative 5x and multiply across this first equation. And when I do that, seeing this, you get negative 5x plus negative 5y is equal to negative 5 times 9600. Now, I get from this result here now. Now, this is a comparison, you see, and this is the actual work that's being done. So I, this here, see what I said about the value? I don't want to touch the screen because it'll, it'll move on me. But see the screen? See, that's a 5 and that's a 5. This is what I'm saying. And one of them has to be what? Negative. That's what I'm saying. So this is a 5 and this is a 5. But actually, one of them has to be its opposite. So negative 5, x minus 5y is equal to negative 48,000. And then the second equation is what? 5x plus 8y is equal to what? 63,300. Now, what you want to do now is you want to add equation 1 plus equation 2. And when you add equation 1 and equation 2, guess what happens? The x's eliminate here. So you have eliminated these coefficient terms right here in both the uh, first equation and second equation. Right? It's very simple. Now when you do that, you come up with 3y is equal to what? 15,300, right? And then dividing both sides by 3 to solve for y. When we do that, we get this. y is equal to what? 5,100, right? And we did that by adding equation 1 and equation 2, then solving for y. That's how we got that value. You see that? Get a good picture of that. Now. After you do that, now in the problem, you don't necessarily have to uh, eliminate the x first or eliminate the y first. You can do either one. Depends. Now, if you got three systems, three equations, of course, there's an x, a y, and a z. But in this case, this is a two system, uh, two unknowns, two equations, two unknowns here that we're solving for. Finding y at what? y is equal to 5,100. Now, after that, you want to perform back substitution. One of the original equations. And then when you do that, you solve for what? X. So this is what we did right here. I like to pick this one here because it's much more simplistic. Actually, you could have used this one too, but this one would be more simplistic. So X plus 5100 is equal to 9600. And I'm taking negative 5100 to both sides. Remember our algebra back in uh, pre-algebra, back in high school and uh, back in middle school. 7th and 8th grade, right? Remember that? And so we're going to get x is equal to what? $4,500. $4,500. So basically here, this is what we're getting. We're getting the Perkins loan being at $4,500, and the federal loan is at what? The federal education loan is at $5,100. Now, to check always, what you should always do, once you find the solutions to your systems of equations once you find the x and the y. Basically what you got right here is I'm showing you that you want to check for x and y in the original equation. So when you check x and y uh, into the original equation, you're basically taking those answers from x and y 
and you're substituting it back into both of the original equations. Now, 4,500 plus uh, $5,100 is equal to a total of $9,600. So you know that this basically you got the correct answers for that. But we're not quite done yet. We're going to go here and we're going to plug the same thing into the second equation saying that the interest formed at $4,500 at 5% and the interest from the $5,100 at 8% is denoted by this here, you see. And it's denoted by this, showing you the work, showing you that you're taking uh, 5% and multiplying it by each of the, uh, 5% multiplying it by that amount, and taking 8% and multiplying by that amount. Now notice you can't take just the 5 and multiply it. You, still, you have to, what, 5% is what? 5 over 100, which is going to give you 0 0.05. Multiply here. So, so be careful, ladies and gentlemen. And then 0 0.08 multiplied by that. Be very, very careful. I had students in the past that accidentally multiply the actual, let's say 8%, they actually multiply 8 to the, uh, to the constant. You don't want to do that. So make sure you watch and be careful and be responsible of your work at hand. So multiplying this and multiplying this here, we come up with $225 plus $408. So we come up with uh, $633. So, you know. That's the total of interest there on these loans. So now, step five, we want to state our business. We want to state what's taking place or what we did. And we stated that what? We're stating that Perkins loan was $4,500 and the federal education loan was $5,100. So this is how you do the application problem with student loan. We will come back with more videos with systems of equations, and I'm looking forward to seeing you really, really soon.